From WFRV-TV Local 5, your local election headquarters, this is Newsmakers Sunday with your host, Tom Zalaski. Good morning. Welcome to Newsmakers Sunday. I'm Tom Zalaski. Joe Biden became the 46th president of the United States on Wednesday, marking a new era in American politics. The inauguration of President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris took place in a locked down Washington, D.C. Federal authorities warned of unrest. 25,000 National Guard troops were in place. But the inauguration went off without any problems. However, there are questions about the future of both the Democratic and Republican parties. And joining us this morning to discuss the nation's political landscape, UW-Green Bay professor Phil Clampett. Phil has joined us on the program in the past, and he has also served as our Channel 5 political consultant on several election nights. Phil, thanks. Good to have you back again. Great to be uh, back. Before we get into specifics, uh, big picture from 30,000 feet, what have you seen over the past two weeks? Well, I I'm probably like most Americans, uh, there's a kind of a rolling emotion that the day after the, the riot and the, and the issue that happened in, in Congress, uh, very depressing mm -hmm. uh, on a lot of different levels. And I remember, <laughs> I, you know, I, I try to think about these things like what are the uh, pluses, what are the minuses, and what are the question marks, which is the hallmark of clear thinking, which is what uh, I've talked about before. And it was kind of hard to do that, to be honest with you, uh, because uh, uh, I kept rolling over in my own head uh, the Romeo and Juliet, the end of Romeo and Juliet, where they say, where be these enemies, Capulet and Montague, see what a scourge is laid upon your hate, uh, that heaven finds means to kill your joy. I remember that as a kid, and I felt like uh, here's the Democrats and Republicans fi still fighting at, at a level that it, uh, just beyond belief. So from that, and then you move to the inauguration um, recently, and you've got... Uh, Amanda Gorman, who's the poet uh, who did this incredible, um, composed this incredible poem about how uh, the hill we climb. Uh, so you you kind of go back and forth emotionally like that. But the, at 30,000 feet, I suspect I'm not unlike um, I'm not unlike a lot of Americans who are hopeful. Uh, but uh, there clearly are deep divisions. I've heard people on the right and I've heard people on the left, and they both say this is the deepest divide they've ever seen. And I think. That's an accurate summary, and one speech, one great poem is not going to solve that. It's going to take more than that. And we've so I this, think that's where we're at. We've got this great divide, as you say. Uh, Joe Biden is calling for unity. He says he will be the president for those who did not support him as much as he will be president for those who did support him. So what does it take for this unity thing that he talks about? Well, it's... <laughs> The, the, the interesting thing is when you hear the word unity, it can mean two things. It can mean I'm going to capitulate to everything that one side wants or the other. Uh, I kind of describe it like a zipper. You know, you, if you take the right side and the left side, whatever they are, on a, on a zipper, you can say that as Republican and Democrat. Capitulation is I'm going to zip this thing all the way up. Mm -hmm. Collaboration means, no, I'm going to take the time and energy to move these two sides together. And um, so that's what the challenge is, I think. I, I think that there's a lot of minds and a lot of viewers, we've all been through that situation where we say, the boss says, let's all be together. And what he or she really means is, you have to capitulate to their point of view. And I think that's one issue. And there are other bosses that are very skilled at bringing together and collaborating and integrating different viewpoints. And I think the, the, the beauty of democracy has always been that. We don't have to agree. The zipper doesn't have to be all the way up. Mm -hmm. It can be part way down. And we can still agree on a lot of different things and we can do a lot of really cool things. President Trump, ex-President Trump said uh, all along the election was stolen from him. He maintained that stance until the 6th of January, softened up a little bit after the Capitol riots. Uh, is it even possible to get his supporters on, on board? Uh, or are they now even further entrenched in Trump's camp than, than they were before? Well, I think there are lots of different reasons why people vote for uh, candidates or vote against them. And so my suspicion is that, that a lot of the loyalty, and we always use the word Trump voter, but below the, that surface of the Trump voter are people who had real concerns and issues that, that he represented. 
And I think some people have made the bargain uh, that say, you know, I'm not sure I like the style. In fact, I may hate the style, but he's my warrior on the issues that I want to be the warrior on. And so it's almost like World War II. I, you know, I wouldn't want to be uh, uh, one of the troops under Patton, but I'll sign up for Patton because I want to win this war. And when you view things as a war, you oftentimes make those kind of compromises. So it's a, I think it's somewhat simplistic to just say that. Now, clearly there are people that are, um, that, that are heavy duty into the personality of Trump and the way in which he approaches it, and that becomes an issue. So is it possible to bring those people together? Uh, I, I think it is. I think it is. It's possible. Uh, it takes a lot of skill, and it takes a lot of motivation to do that. And do, it'll, it'll do be a real challenge. You think we'll see Donald Trump back on the political stage, or is it too early right now? Uh, it's going to be dependent upon the impeachment trial. Um, the impeachment trial is kind of the wild thing that's out there, and I think that's what drives, um, in part, you say, can we, can we come together when that is still hanging out there? And can Biden can, can unite the country when that's still hanging out there? And that's the one kind of big question mark in my thinking about how does that play out? And I think a lot of people are kind of wait and see. Let's see what happens with that. Um, and I'm not sure where that's going to end up or, or go. And it's, it's probably, in terms of the come together idea, that issue is going to inflame um, people that are devoted to Donald Trump, the man, Donald Trump, the personality. Um, and and discourage people that are more of Donald Trump, the, uh, the policies, Donald Trump, the issues that I want to see go, go forward. Uh, the bottom line is it's probably best for Republicans uh, and um, is, to, get, is to, to move him to the side so somebody else can come, um, uh, somebody else can take a leadership role. But who that's going to be, we have no idea. How do you see this upcoming impeachment trial? Is this a means by which the Democrats can make sure that Donald Trump never again is allowed to run for office? Or is this a sincere effort to show America and the world that certain behaviors will not be tolerated? Is this political or is it legal or is it both? Well, I think it's obviously both. There's a huge yeah. legal question about whether or not you can indict uh, or you can convict uh, him of the impeachment uh, after he's left he's office. office yeah. So that's, that's a legal issue on the other hand. On, the other, uh, on one hand, and on the other hand, you've got this, this whole idea of, do I want to signal that this is inappropriate behavior, that this is an inappropriate thing? And Democrats and Republicans, uh, as far as I can tell, 99% of them are saying, that was way over the line, and it should have, I always thought, I always thought, why not just have a, I think it would, the best thing that could have happened for the country was if the, the House and the Senate passed 100%, everybody, 100, all the representatives, all the, the senators, and I think they could have gotten 99, 98% of censure of that behavior. I think that would have been a uniting moment on saying, these are the rules of the game, and you went over the line. And, uh, and I think that would have been, been very helpful. I bet they would have gotten, I bet they would have received both of those. Uh, they, they would have received side from both sides of the political aisle. The, they would have had integration on the issue of censure. But when you take the step of, uh, of impeachment, that is a, you know, some people call it impeachment light or snap impeachment. That smacks of uh, more political issues than, and that, that's where we get into challenges, I think. But was censure enough? For certain factions. Well, you'd like to get you'd like to get something even. Like, maybe we should say censor plus, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because that's you know uh, you know. And I suppose the context of it is, and the reason why it's so hard is because you've already impeached him once, so you've already done the draconian measure. So censure doesn't seem enough, and so I understand why people uh, on a you know the Democrats and, and, and the people on the far left would say that's not enough we've got to impeach him again when do you see this Senate trial uh, coming immediately or is this something the Democrats will uh, hold in their back pocket until they need it well I don't know yeah. I it's probably the biggest question mark that's out there I don't know uh, and I think it's probably if you're uh, Chuck Schumer is probably the biggest question you have to deal with in the next 100 days. Do you want to just sideline it, put it on the sideshow, or do you want to get it over with and get it over with quick? And I think there's a lot of 
Uh, there's a lot of um, uh, energy around, let's get this over quick. So my suspicion would be that let's get this over with quick, and it benefits both the Democrats and Republicans that way. So you're looking for that type of um, uh, energy to, 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 to make that happen. All right, we are back with more with Professor Phil Clampett right after this. So please stay with us.